You may not know it, but Apple actually has a secure video feature built right into iCloud Plus that allows you to use a camera like this without needing any kind of third-party software or subscription. My mom has been wanting a camera like this to keep tabs on her home and her African gray parrot Grayson while she's away, and so being the good son I am, I picked this up for her. Plus, I just figured this would be a good time to test out HomeKit secure video for the very first time, and after very little research, I picked up the Logitech Circle View. There are only a handful of HomeKit compatible cameras, and like I said, I did very little research, but I wanted something that was built specifically for HomeKit and Apple's built-in app that did not require any third-party app or account, and this fit the bill. And this is not really going to be a review of this camera specifically, more of just the setup process of the HomeKit secure video and what that looks like. And I've used plenty of other cameras before, like Eufy and the Google stuff, and I even use Unify cameras right now, but I needed something simpler for my mom. And this does seem to have everything she needs, like HD video, night vision, and even a privacy button. The Circle View is an indoor-outdoor camera and comes with just the camera, some mounting hardware, and the power adapter. It's not the cheapest HomeKit camera at $160, but it was easy and quick for me to get on Amazon. Link below. So let's get it set up. So I got the camera plugged in and booted up, and so now we're going to open up Apple's Home app. And as you can see here, I already have some devices in my Home app already, and these are mostly Hue light bulbs and light switches and things like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hit add, and we're gonna add an accessory. And all HomeKit devices are going to come with a QR code-like thing on the device itself that you can scan, and you'll also get that on a card for easier scanning if the device is mounted. So now we can scan that little code with the camera on the phone. And it says, yes, we want to add a camera. So we're gonna to connect to the camera and it's gonna take just a moment for it to actually talk to the camera and start the setup process. And it looks like I ran into my first issue. It says I need to connect to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Well, that kind of sucks because most of my network in my house is five gigahertz. So I'm going to need to connect to a 2.4 gigahertz network so that the camera can also connect to the same network that the phone is connected to. And I assume once I'm done with the setup and this is connected to a 2.4 gigahertz network, I can connect my phone back to five gigahertz and have no issue. So I'll click okay, and I will join a 2.4 gigahertz network. And now I'm connected to a 2.4 gigahertz network. I can scan the code again. We'll set it up and we'll wait for this to connect. After a few seconds, the light on here started turning blue instead of green, so it's in progress. And you can kind of see in the background, we get a little view of the camera right here. Great, and now we can choose what room this is in. We'll choose my studio for now. Hit continue. Yes, it's the circle view. You can name it whatever you want it looks like. And there we go. So now it looks like we can choose when the camera streams and records. With streaming meaning that you can actually just log in live and watch the camera, but you won't be able to record. And you have the option for when home and when away. And it looks like when you're away, it uses your iPhone, your main iPhone's location to tell if you're home or away. So let's see what options we have. So when home, we can stream, we can detect activity, and we can stream and allow recording. So I'll go ahead and allow recording. Why not? That's what we're trying out. And when away, we'll also allow recording to see how that works. Continue. Do I want to share this with anybody else in my household? Sure, why not? Continue. And camera details. And I'm not sure exactly what this is asking me to do. It wants me to rename sensors on the device itself. We'll just leave them how they are. Camera automations, when motion is detected in studio, turn on the lights in the studio. Looks like you can have it automatically. So if I walk into my studio, it detects me, it will turn the lights on for me automatically. We'll just leave that off for now. And great, the camera is now added to my home. Here we go, look at that. We get a camera, it's not exactly a a live view from there, but if we tap in here, we should be able to get full live view of the camera. Oops, a little bit of feedback there. Oh, oh, there we go, that should stop it. Great, fantastic, so now we have a camera, and I assume it's recording. We are live, what else can we do? Can we scroll back? Nope, don't wanna do that. So I have the camera set up, but I'm not seeing a way to go back in time to view the recording. It should be recording because I have it set to record while I'm at home and while away. Oh, and there we go. So it just popped up. So it must have just needed a little bit of time to actually have something to record. So now we have a little timeline we can scroll back to. And that should allow us to see any 
events that happen on the camera. So it should start recording anytime the camera senses activity. And this is an activity-based recording. So you're not going to get 24 seven recording on this if there's no activity, it's just going to be recording when it senses activity. So we should be able to set up notifications by going into settings, status and notifications, turn on activity notifications there uh, for any time anytime specific motion is detected. And here's the specific motion, people, animals, vehicles, packages, or status change notification if the camera goes offline, things like that. So now I should be able to get notifications when the camera senses motions. So let's try out the notifications. I will pop myself out of the frame and give it just a sec. And when I come back, we should get a notification on the phone. Give it just a sec. And there it is. So it took just a couple seconds for that notification to come through. And if we tap on that, that should take us to the home app, to the camera. And right now we can see live. So if somebody entered your house and you wanted to talk to them, you could do that by hitting this button. And well, we're not gonna do that right now, bad idea. And you can go back to see the events. So you can tap back and see any events where there was activity that was recorded. And that's pretty cool. And like I said, it is event-based recording. So you're going to get up to 10 days that you can go backwards in time to see those events of actions that were captured. And it looks like to do this, you're going to tap on the screen, pull back here and you should get a calendar where you can go back and forth depending on the day you're looking for. Let's see what other options we have for using HomeKit Secure Video on the Apple Home app. Again, you can choose which room it's going into. It has accessories, it has a motion sensor and a light sensor. Oh, because it does do night vision, let's try that out real quick. And so after all of the lights are off, the camera turns on its infrared sensors and now it can see in the dark up to about 15 feet, I believe. So that's pretty cool. You also have automations, which we're not going to use. Again, status and notifications, we've already kind of looked at that. Notify when camera goes offline, allow snapshots and notifications. So you see a little frame of the video when it pops up in the notification. Recording options, you can do face recognition so that if it detects a specific person that you tell it to recognize, it'll say, hey, Jerry's in the room or whatever. You can create activity zones. So if this is pointing at a yard or something or a part of the room that you don't want it to record activities for, right? You can mark off where you want it to actually record and anything outside of that will not trigger the recording or trigger a notification. And we can enable or disable the status light and night vision on the camera itself. Overall, I think that was pretty easy and I think this is going to work pretty well for my mom. She doesn't need another third party app and a login information and password, but you will need an iCloud Plus subscription in order to do the activity recording and be able to have that. If you don't have an iCloud Plus subscription, or extra storage on your iCloud, you won't be able to do recording, but you can do live view. And there are three different plans for iCloud Plus, which includes 50 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes, and two terabytes. If you have the 50 gigabyte plan, you can have a single camera that can record up to 10 days of events. If you have 200 gigabytes, you can have up to five cameras. And if you have the two terabytes, you can have unlimited cameras to record up to 10 days of events each. Now that can be your own individual iCloud Plus plan, or it can be part of a family plan. Either one will work. But I think we're all set. Setting up a HomeKit secure video camera with Apple and HomeKit and secure video is pretty simple. It was a pretty easy process overall. And I think it's going to be the simplest form or simplest way for my mom to get video into her home so that she doesn't have to worry about things going on when she's not there. I think she's gonna like it a lot and I should be able to help her manage it as well if she needs help with that. So I think it's gonna work. But what do you guys think? Is HomeKit secure video something that you're looking at? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and YouTube thinks that you're gonna love this video right over here. So definitely check that out. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.